All right, it is Python on hardware. Yay, I'm wearing the shirt. Yeah. I'm ready. All right, a few things. Um, we'll play this full video later, but we got MP3s going on CircuitPython Correct. devices. Correct, very so cool. This just means you're gonna be able to do a lot of cool projects. Yes, we had wave playback, which is great, but waves are kind of big. So now we have support for compressed MP3 format because MP3 is out of patent, yeah. uh, which means that we can now ship software or hardware with MP3 decoding on it. We've got, it only will work on the larger boards like the M4 or the NRF52, like the more chunky boards, not the M0 series. And you can play up to two MP3s concurrently. Okay. FOMU. Want Python in your USB port? Of course you do. Try the beta of CircuitPython for FOMU, full USB support, thanks to the new uh, USB port port and the awesome tiny USB library binaries and instructions are on GitHub. And uh, you can also read some of the story about a profiler. Yeah, this is an FPGA, I think, running RISC-V. It's emulating, it's basically a RISC-V processor that's then loading CircuitPython on it, I think. I mean, it's pretty mm -hmm. amazing. And it fits in a USB port, like okay. inside. Uh, TinyUSB now supports the NXP IMXRT, Cortex-M7, including the RT-1010, RT-1015, RT-1020, RT-1050, RT-1060, and RT-1064. There mm. are over 300 stars and 70 forks of this. TinyUSB is helping everyone getting USB onto their hardware, and that's usually the first step to doing circuit bike. And you get all the stuff. You get mass storage, CDC, HID. Yeah. More stuff coming down the pipe. Speaking of, mm. what's Feather, this? The Feather family takes flight with Feather and Circuit Python on the NXP IMX RT. This is from Arturo, mm. and this is something we're going to be working two flavors on this. You can do USB C. Yeah. You can do each type of RT and yeah. This is the 1010, and this is the 1062. Yeah. So the 1010 is a lower cost one. Uh, but it's available in a QFP, not BGA. And then this is the BGA version, which is, of course, ton more pin, but you see that extra mezzanine connector that has mm. like full TFT controller out. It has like a megabyte of RAM. It's bonkers. Yeah. Whereas the 1010 is a little bit simpler. Like it doesn't have as many pins, but uh, he stuck a ESP32 on the end there. So you can do wireless and Bluetooth. Yeah. So we mentioned this before, working on a NXP um, Arduino shape thing. We're working on an NXP Feather one. We're going to try to team up with Arturo. So um, this is good to see because this is where we think it's heading. People will do stuff with TinyUSB. They'll use the Feather format and then they'll get CircuitPython going and they'll do it fast. And that's the thing that's really important. You can do all this development really fast. And speaking of fast, um, these are some previews um, from Scott of the things that he showed last week, not only on the show and tell, but also on the tweets. Um, this was um, showing live messages off an uh, iPhone that goes over to a Bluetooth device using CircuitPython BLA. Um, Brian Station is working on a lot of stuff. Um, we put this in our newsletter every week. This is all his Oshpark orders. Yeah. <laughs> it's not actually, it's just, it's looping. It's not an infinite scroll. No, it's actually infinite. Well, it is. Okay. It's, it's a four by four. Actually, one of these boards I put together, and I'm going to show it off yeah. soon. Um, lots of cool games that people are developing with CircuitPython. This one is uh, Blink is Breakout. It's a CircuitPython implementation of a game that's similar to the classic Atari game Chips Challenge. This is by uh, Foamy Guy. Neat. This um, connects up to look at the RSS feed on um, the Amazon AWS reInvent conference, and then it would keep track of the number of announcements. This is the Pi badge. So not only is it a conference badge, it shows your name. It can basically live stream in what's going on at the conference. Um, this is some 3D printed cases at Hackaday Supercon. Um, thanks to DigiKey and I guess us, we had a bunch of uh, Pi badges, Edge badges at Supercon, and so people were able to instantly, quickly do something cool with it, and now they're making cool accessories for their badges and more. Um, this one I think is going to be a guide or is a guide. Coming soon. Yeah, this is a um, Pi Portal smart switch that uses Adafruit IO, and if then this that turns on and off the light with voice command using Alexa or Google Assistant. Um, this is always neat. So Cedar Grove is like constantly making these He's just really like cranking cool. out these feathers. Yeah, this is a Stemma host feather wing. And then this is the Stemma wing backpack. And you can check these out on Hackaday IO. But um, the feather wing attaches to the feather wing board, provides Stemma or Stemma QT interface. And the other one is a backpack that adds standalone Stemma interface for a non microcontroller feather wing, like a uh, I squared C or 2C and an LED 
display. Um, there are three Circuit Python lectures. There's probably more by now. Um, this is from Korea, and they're showing all of. And if you speak Korean, listen Korean, you can understand it. That's good um, because that's the language they're in. And this is all about Python, Blinka, Blinka runs on Raspberry Pi. Tune into that. Um, here's another good example. This is what I was talking about before. Um, folks are quickly making badges and prototype hardware, and they're tossing Circuit Python on it. So this is so cute looking. Yeah, it's a cute little badge. Um, this is the CC Coven badge. It runs Circuit Python, and uh, in our newsletter we have a link if you want to buy one and help support the maker for that. Uh, this is a, the Feather Snow. It's an easy way to unlock your programming creativity with Circuit Python. It's a snowflake, and you just plug it in, and you're doing Python, and they can control the snowflakes. Um, Lots of new boards over on circuitpython.org slash downloads and slash Blinka. So check all of those out. We also um, featured the book. We have this in the store. This is from Japan. This is Circuit Python and Moo. But one of the things about the Circuit Python book um, that I thought was neat is there's a page of why is it called Moo? And the author, uh, Nicholas, is very thoughtful. And, and like he said, he has many layers of why he comes up with things. Um, Moo sounds like Moo. Kids like saying that. Um, Greek Moo symbol is for micro. Moo is a micro editor for micro things. Modern pronunciation of Moo is me, so the, both the, so the website is good with me. And uh, does the editor have a Buddha nature? Moo. Symbol? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, over on the Dropbox blog, you can uh, read this cool article. It's about the creator of Python and how Python makes thinking and code easier. The PyCon, PyCon Africa videos are posted. We posted all of those up, and they're in our newsletter. And if you're looking for a good gift this year, these are Python earrings. Cute. You, you can stop over at their Etsy store, and it's the uh, just search for Python programming language, and you'll stay on Etsy and this will look for the earrings. Yeah. yeah. That's Python harmonies. Yay! Blinka, blinka, blinka. All right.